Welcome to one of the great scenes in college football, Doak Campbell Stadium here in Tallahassee. The annual clash between Florida State and Florida. It's a series that has been dominated by the Gators. But Florida has been particularly dominant since Urban Meyer arrived in Gainesville. They've won six in a row, five times under Urban Meyer by an average of over 20 points per game. Hi again, everyone. I'm Bob Wachuzan alongside Brian Greasy. Thanks for joining us today. What better spot could you be oh. in than Florida, Florida State, Thanksgiving weekend here in Tallahassee, a perfect day for football. And a game of monumental importance, particularly to Florida State. Certainly is. And could this be the year that Florida State breaks that six game losing streak? The anticipation in Tallahassee with their new football coach, Jimbo Fisher, the way that he's led this team and their opportunity really to take over the state of Florida from a recruiting standpoint and win the state championship today. I guarantee you that there's nobody in this stadium or on that sideline for Florida State that's thinking about Maryland and NC State game today. And yeah, Florida State has a chance for the first time since 1999 to win the state championship, having already beaten Miami earlier this year. Certainly do, and it's big in recruiting. In this state, such a fertile recruiting ground for Florida State to turn the tide on Florida in a game like this where they have 100 recruits in town. It's huge. Make no mistake about it. If you were a recruit and you were on the sideline and you got a chance to experience a scene like the one we're experiencing here, how could you not say yes <laughs> to that scholarship offer? before the Knolls take the field to welcome the Gators. And now Osceola and Renegade set to bring out the Knolls. Looks like Jimbo Fisher wants the seniors up front. Here come the Knolls. All that's left is to play football in Tallahassee in a moment. tradition that began over 30 years ago here in Tallahassee taking place a moment ago once again Osceola riding renegade with the flaming spear gets us started. Florida won the 
toss deferring their option to the second half. So Florida State and the senior Christian Ponder will have his first crack at it. A win over Florida for Florida State would give the Knowles their first nine win regular season since 2003. That's the last time they beat Florida. What an accomplishment that would be for Jimbo Fisher in year one if he could get it. Line drive kick to Greg Reed. And a pretty good return out close to the 34 yard line and Christian Ponder the senior his yardage might be down from last season but the injuries that have mounted throughout the year have raised his stock in terms of courage in the eyes of Jimbo Fisher and the coaching staff to a point that I don't remember a, a coach talking Brian to us about a quarterback in more glowing terms as a kid than Jimbo Fisher did with Christian. Yeah Ponder. he said his toughness is unprecedented played through the shoulder injury burst a sack that burst in his elbow had 500 cc's of fluid taken off his elbow after the Carolina game. He has just been all everything for Florida State. Omar Hunter jumps offsides for Florida. Was he drawn off? Well, it's going to go against Outside, the Gators. Back contact. Number 99 defense. Five yard penalty. First down. And those injuries for Christian Ponder certainly has affected his play this year, but a lot of people say he's had a down year, but he's still had 17 touchdowns in uh, the short amount of time he's been playing. Quick hitch to Easterling on first and five, and Easterling has a first down as we take a look at our impact players. You're going to see the halfback, Chris Thompson. He's the home run hitter for this Florida State offense. He's got three touchdown rushes of over 70 yards. And when they throw the football, look for Willie Halstead. He's only a sophomore, but uh, Jimbo Fisher says he's got a chance to be a good player. And Ahmad Black, the unquestioned leader for this Florida defense, is making his 38th start today. They run the option with the pitch to Thompson. And he is strung out, maybe picked up a yard. Janoris Jenkins did a good job to bring him down. We'll see Christian Ponder run a little bit of the option. They say eight or ten times a game, they want him to use his feet. He's got good speed, runs a 4-7. He's smart with the football. He certainly can throw the ball, but they want to use all of the talents that Christian Ponder possesses, and one of those is run the option. Actually lost a yard, second down and 11. Five man rush ponder slips it to the perimeter to Burt Reed with a cutback Reed's got a first down and a flag comes out late. It looked like Reed may have been hit up by the face mask. This could be an extra 15 against the Gators. It's a gate of 16 as it stands now. This could be a big play and put Florida State in the red zone. No foul. Rest in the face mask. Number 35. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, Burt Reed is trying to get some extra yardage. Makes a nice cut. Looked like uh, got the hand. Ahmad Black got the hand on top of the uh, helmet, but Reed runs just a stop route. And Moses Jenkins, number 36 for Florida, falls down on the route twice and allows Burt Reed to get a big first down and a penalty. They didn't get him on the face mask. But it's a first down to the 22. Ponder, the quick slant, dropped. Looking for Lonnie Pryor inside Ahmad Black, who might be the best player for this Florida defense, came up and broke it up. Yeah, Ahmad Black has just made play after play for this Florida defense, and you see him jump the slant route, just a quick inside. He's able to not make the interception, but get there in time and knock that football away. Ahmad Black's had 96 tackles on the year for Florida. That's 32 more tackles than the next highest guy on that defense. He is making plays all over the field. Trap handoff to Pryor. A couple of yards. Justin Trotteau. First man there for the Gators. It'll be third down and close to eight yards. Ponder 
took a big hit from Armand Black at the end of this play. Handed the football off. We're going to see a Black come through there and just unloads on Christian Ponder. I'm surprised the officials missed that. Normally the referee is keying in solely on the quarterback. That would have been a penalty. Florida State best in the ACC on third down. This is third down and a long seven, close to eight. Here comes the blitz. Ponder well protected up the seam and it's tipped and incomplete. Will Hill was able to knock it away from Bo Relaford. Yeah, and Ponder had Relaford open. The ball just sails a little bit on him. You're going to see Relaford right in the middle of the screen coming down the down the pipe. If that ball was a, a foot lower, would have been a touchdown. As it was, Relaford did a good job just to get a hand on the ball to prevent the interception. 38-yard field goal attempt for Dustin Hopkins, 16 for 22 so far this year. And the Noles are on the board. Too often, though, in this game, Florida State has driven the ball and settled for field goals. They settled for a field goal on their opening possession. So the Gators are about to get the football down only three. So it's Jimbo Fisher in his first year replacing the legend Bobby Bowden. 22 years as an assistant now gets a crack at running one of the preeminent programs in college football. Spent three years as an offensive coordinator at Florida State under Bobby Bowden, also the offensive coordinator at LSU for a good portion of that time under Nick Saban. And he said he took a lot of what he learned under Nick Saban and implemented it overhauling different areas of the Florida State program. Yeah, completely overhauled this, this program. And it's about the players and the respect for the players and the process of building these players as individuals. And that will help them perform better on the field. And the thing he told us this week that I really stuck with me was what Bobby Bowden said to him that I'm going to get out of the way for you, Jimbo, and let you do this. But you've got to be able to do it your way and Jimbo said I'm going to respect the past respect Bobby Bowden and what he did here and learn from it but I got to make my own decisions to Andre DeBose. Blockers out in front. Andre DeBose finds a seam. DeBose turns it on. Out of bounds at the Knowles 32-yard line. And that's got to make Urban Meyer happy. This is something they need to kickstart their offense and their team. And DeBose took one back for a touchdown on the first kick against South Carolina. Didn't quite get there this time, but sets up this much maligned Florida offense in great position. They're going to start with Trey Burton at quarterback. Burton on a keeper to the 30-yard line. Picked up a couple of yards. John Brantley, of course, on the field as well. They've got a variety of ways they can go at quarterback for the Gators. You're going to see all three quarterbacks, Brantley, Jordan Reed, who is the starting tight end, will play some, and then Burton, who took that snap. All three of them will play considerably behind center today. Now it's Brantley lines up in the shotgun. He'll give it to Rainey. Rainey right up the middle, and he's got a first down inside the 20 down to the Knowles 19-yard line. Well, you're going to see John Brantley. He's the one that's going to throw mostly today for the Florida offense, and he's had his struggles this year. A lot has been said about whether he fits into this offense of Urban Meyer and the Florida Gators. He's not the Tim Tebow type, doesn't run as well, uh, and he has struggled this year. A little hitch to Rainey. That's an incomplete pass. Urban Meyer in his sixth year, struggling as much this year, obviously, as he ever has at Florida, the first coach of the SEC to ever win two outright national titles, a three-time national coach of the year, but he loses Tim Tebow, and John Brantley has not been able to replace Tebow in any way, shape, or form. Back 
to Burton at quarterback now. He hands, and there's nothing there. A loss of a couple of yards back to about the 20-yard line for Chris Rainey. Marcus White came up and made the stop, along with Kendall Smith. But it certainly has been hard to replace Tim Tebow, and I don't think that anybody had any expectations that, uh, that he would be replaced, but the Florida Gators came into the season wanting to, to throw the football a little bit more with Brantley and run it out of traditional sets, and that offense didn't work for them, and that's when they had to change up and go to this three-quarterback kind of hybrid to try to manufacture offense. Third down and a long 11, close to 12. Four-man rush. Brantley finds a man wide open at the 10-yard line, walking into the end zone with a touchdown is Robert Clark. Andre DeBose with the big kickoff return and a third down and 11 touchdown pass from Brantley to Robert Clark. The Gators may be down this year, but they have plenty of weapons and true freshman Robert Clark scores first. John Brantley with only his third touchdown pass in the last seven plus games for the Gators, but it gives them the 7-3 lead. We haven't even played five minutes of the first quarter of this rivalry game, and already plenty of fireworks. Now can the Knowles answer? Greg Reed to the 15. Bumped out at the 25, and let's go back to the touchdown. Let's go back and take a look. You know, defensive coordinator Mark Stoops for Florida State talks about discipline. They're just going to run a little inside route here, and you're going to freeze it right there. You'll see both the corner and the safety lose the outside leverage, and then the linebacker falls down, and that allows Clark to catch the ball and run outside with nobody left, the corner or the safety. That's discipline on defense, and Mark Stoops has preached being precise for this Florida State defense, and right there gave up a big play. Back to the ground, and Thompson tries to bounce it outside, caught from behind, loses at least three yards. Jay Howard pursued him with the edge set. Florida State comes into this football game really wanting to establish a line of scrimmage and run the football. They're averaging 183 yards on the ground per game this season, and Florida is not as dominant as they once were on their front seven, especially stopping the run. The strength of this Florida defense is in the secondary. Florida State wants to attack them up front. Throw intended for Reed. Here comes the flag. Got tied up with Ahmad Black. Or check that Moses Jenkins. Now Urban Meyer saying uncatchable. Pass interference. Number 36, defense. The ball replacing the spot of the foul. The ball did down. sail pretty high over the head of Bert Reed. One of the favorite routes of this Florida State offense is the slant, and Florida knows it. Moses Jenkins reads the, the route. Just can't put your hands on the wide receiver when you're trying to get in and knock that football down. They're going to call that. But Florida, that's now the second time Ahmad Black got, got in there on the first slant, the second time, and Christian Ponyer better be careful throwing that ball in because Florida is reading those routes. Play action for Ponder. Slings it to the sideline. First down catch to the 40-yard line to Taiwan Easterling. He's got at least one catch in 22 straight games, a gain of 12. 
this is what experience will do for you as a quarterback. The timing of this throw, that ball is out of Christian Ponder's hands before Easterling comes out of his break. So when he comes out, that ball is already halfway to him, thrown perfectly on the sideline, and a nice catch by uh, Easterling. Using his legs, no receivers out there, has to tuck it under and run, and picked up about four yards as we check in with Robert Flores. All right, Bob, Dr. Pepper, ACC update. This is the game Florida State fans interested in. NC State goes on top of Maryland. Russell Wilson sneaks in from the one. If the Wolfpack win, they clinch the ACC Atlantic Division. This is the game we'll be keeping an eye on all afternoon. 7 nothing Wolfpack on top of the Turks. Bob. Robert, thanks very much. So early on, some bad news as far as the Knolls are concerned. If NC State beats Maryland, then Florida State is knocked out of the ACC championship game. That's a score, though, that Jimbo Fisher said he is not going to allow anyone to put up anywhere here at Doe Campbell Stadium during our game. Ty Jones up the middle for about three yards. He wants no distractions during this game for any of his players. You can see that was up on the scoreboard pregame. We're not showing the score of the NC State game at the coach's request, so get your Blackberries out. And if you're a fan here in Tallahassee, if you want to know what's going on between NC State and Maryland, you're on your own. A few people with their cell phones out already. I can see in the stands checking the score, but <laughs> it's okay if the fans do it, just not the guys on the sideline. on third and three floating pass to the near side intended for Reed no flag comes out and now near midfield Florida State's going to have to kick it away we talked about the strength of this Florida defense being the secondary and they have got players upon players the backup players could start for a lot of teams in the, in the country and Janoris Jenkins number one their best corner now we'll go back to return punts. He's an electric player on defense and returning punts. Florida State has to account for him. And a low line drive kick that Jenkins will let bounce. Oh, did that do the job for the Knowles? So the roll dead at the four yard line. Sean Powell's kick. It was tough to look at, but it got the job done. 49 yarder. Football on ABC brought to you by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Allstate, dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Are you in good hands? For the first time since 1975, that man immortalized outside the stadium here in Tallahassee, not on the sidelines at his namesake field as Jimbo Fisher takes over for the legend Bobby Bowden here in Tallahassee and if you've ever met Bobby Bowden I did once he would have no recollection of ever meeting me I will never meet, forget meeting him he makes you feel like you're the most important person in the world when you're talking to him one of those special people that the relationships that he built up through his time at Florida State and his memory will never be forgotten now it's Jordan Reed that quarterback from the goal line Reed dives out to about the seven yard line, a pickup of three. Brandon Jenkins cut him down. Well, we've seen uh, Trey Burton, we've seen Brantley, and now we see their third quarterback wheel is uh, Jordan Reed. And he's going to be playing quite a bit today. He's a, he's a mix. He can throw the football. He's a big kid, 6'3, 240 pounds. He can run it. He's been used almost exclusively as a red zone quarterback, but uh, he could be the future at quarterback for Florida. Swings one to Rainey. Rainey makes a nice cutback, gets out to the 10 yard line, and then pays the price. Nigel Bradham came up and made the stop. How about the rhythm of the game? 
at the quarterback position when you are shifting and changing and it's a three-headed monster? Well, it's tough. It's tough for an offense. It's tough for the quarterbacks. You see now Brantley back in the game. He's just shuttled in and out. It's tough to get a rhythm and a tempo, but somehow Florida has made the commitment to this style of offense and this rhythm of the no huddle. They've got to make it work. They might have to call a timeout. Play clock down to five. Play clock at two. Not the call timeout. Brantley actually took the snap. Trey Burton called timeout, I believe, before the snap came back to Brantley. <laughs> and that's a great example. We got two quarterbacks on the field. Who calls the timeout? <laughs> Who's the leader? That's one of the things you, that you're going to have to deal with if you're Urban Meyer in this style of, of offense and playing these guys is the vacuum at leadership position of quarterback suffers. And right there trying to change a play in a loud environment, the smart play is to take the timeout. Trey Burton got it. Brantley didn't. Well, John Brantley was raised to be the quarterback at Florida. His father, of course, was a quarterback at Florida and began coaching John when he was 10 years old. At one point, they installed a spread passing attack with four wide receivers on a team where John was the quarterback when he was in fifth grade. By the time he had finished that season, he'd already been offered a scholarship by Duke. <laughs> So when he went to high school, he was already kind of a legend in the state, broke a record that was co-held by Tim Tebow for most touchdown passes thrown by a high school quarterback in Florida history. He was the golden boy that was going to come in and replace arguably one of the top players in college football history. And here on third down, swings it up the sideline, and he's got a first down to the other quarterback, Trey Burton, out to about the 15-yard line. That's a lot to have on a kid's shoulders, though, I would think, Brian Greasy, to go where your father played following Tim Tebow, quarterback. Well, and, and he was the Gatorade National Player of the Year in high school. I mean, he was he's a tremendous quarterback who can throw the ball. This year has hurt his confidence, and right now you see a quarterback that's not real confident. Trey Burton this time gets to the edge, runs over his own man. And gets to the 20-yard line for a gain of nearly five. Well, that is a kid that was raised to be a Gator. <laughs> now, John Brantley originally, when he was looking at schools, committed to Texas. And then after a lot of thought and consultation with his family, ultimately decommitted and stayed in Gainesville. Now it's Jordan Reed back at quarterback, although Burton sneaks up <laughs> and talks to the offensive line. Reed hit right at the line. A flag thrown from the secondary. Nigel Bradham came up and made first contact for Florida State. Penalties hurt this offense from from Florida because they can't get behind the down and distance. But look at Trey, Trey Burton, number eight, making the call up at the line of scrimmage. I've ne never seen a quarterback number number 11 behind center and another quarterback on the field that's making the checks and the calls at the line of scrimmage. Blitz from the Knowles. Quarterback draw, Reed. Out close to the 15-yard line. It'll be third down and at least 10, if not 11. But you see, when they get behind in the down and distance, they don't have the ability to come out and just throw the football to get back into good situations. Now, third and 10 again. You saw there was a third and 10 on their first drive in the red zone, which forced them to attempt a field goal. Here again, another third down. Gonna be smart with the football. with a flag thrown again from the secondary, scrambles back to the line of scrimmage. A coverage sack, no one open downfield, Mr. Alexander. There to trip up Brentley. The flag was thrown again from about 35 or 40 yards downfield, all the way back towards the line. 
They have been too good at coverage downfield. First They've got foul. somebody for unnecessary roughness by hands to the face. Number four, the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's a big mistake. Strong safety, Terrence Parks. Gives the Gators a free first down. You're going to see Terrence Parks in the slot at the bottom of your screen. Look like he just got the hands up around the face. So new life for the Gators. And now it's back to Jordan Reed. Fumbles the snap and has to turn Turtle back at about the 24 yard line. That was a good snap. You know, a lot was made of the snapping issues early in this, the start of the season with the Marquis or Mike Pouncey. But that snap was good. Jordan Reed just let that go right through his hands. Also five on first down. So in a passing situation, it's back to John Brantley. Continuing education of John Brantley, 7 3 Gators. Saturday Night Football continues on ABC with a battle between Big 12 rivals. Oklahoma takes on Oklahoma State. Brent Musburger and Kirk Herbstreet will be there. Second and 15. And off to Rainey. Pretty good running room. Out across the 30 to about the 33 yard line. Marcus White tripped him up. It'll still be third down and a long six. Rainey has been a go-to guy for this Florida offense with Jeff Demps being out. He is their playmaker, their home run hitter, with the speed to make plays on the perimeter and the toughness to run in between the tackles. Stay with a blitz and a flag down. False start. False start. Offense number 67. Five yard penalty. Third down. You get in third down situations and defenses can be very complex. You see here, there's no. Nobody on the second level at the linebacker position for Florida State and we're having to check the protections at the line of scrimmage. John Branley has to identify the defense and make the proper adjustment and it's taking a lot of time. Draw play. Getting to the sideline is Jeff Demps. It has been a lost season for arguably the most talented skill position player at Florida. Jeff Demps is a track star, a national champion in the 100 meters, and he flashes that speed for 16 yards here. Well, he's the fastest player in college football when he's healthy, and undoubtedly the number one playmaker. We talked with Urban Meyer. He said, we lost our best player early, and that broken foot is just not getting back. Back to Jordan Reed. Carries tacklers, lost the football. The Noles have it. times this season Jordan Reed fighting for extra yards you love the effort but you've got to secure the football a charity hop right into the arms of Xavier Rhodes so the redshirt freshman turns it over not normally a problem for Urban Meyer teams the fewest giveaways in the SEC number two in America and fewest turnovers since 2005, since Urban Meyer took over. Play action for Christian Ponder. Watch the home run. It's a jump ball down the sideline. Almost intercepted. Moses Jenkins with great position on Rodney Smith. 
We talked about the giveaways, at least traditionally how low they have been for Florida. Not the case this year, though, and their four losses, they are minus eight in the turnover ratio. Yeah, and that tells the story better than any other stat that you can look at, and you can talk about offense and defense and special teams, but if you turn the football over, especially in the SEC, you are not going to win. Chris Thompson bounces to midfield. Four-yard gain. It'll be third down and six. Like the aggressive approach by Jimbo Fisher, you get a turnover at midfield, you throw a go route down the field to your tall wide receiver, Rodney Strong at 6'6", and see if something good happens. The only problem is when you have that incomplete pass, you come back in second and ten, you run the ball for three yards, and now you've got another third down situation. If I'm the Gators, I'm coming after Christian Ponder in this situation. They show blitz off the edge with Cody Riggs yeah. creeping up. Ponder saw it and made the adjustment. Here comes Riggs anyway. Six-man rush on the slant. Ponder beats it. Finds Rodney Smith that time. Good for a first down. And that's just great. That's great quarterback play. It's experience. It's seeing the blitz, audibling, making sure that it's taken care of, and then throwing an accurate throw for a big third down conversion that sets them up in Florida Gator territory. But that's what senior leadership from Christian Ponder brings it. Do you think he's a dark horse quarterback at the next level? He certainly could. I mean, anybody could anybody could get hot, prove themselves. He's got work to do, but he's proven himself in big games. I think that's what he's got in his back pocket. As I played at one of the biggest universities in the country. This time on a keeper. And he may have lost a yard as we go back to Robert Flores. All right, Bob, Taco Bell Studio update. Conference races in the balance in the ACC. North Carolina State now leads Maryland 14-0. Touchdown pass from Russell Wilson. They clinch the Atlantic Division with a win. Meantime, Wisconsin, they clinch at least a share of the Big Ten title. If they beat Northwestern, they're leading 14-3 into the first quarter. So NC State has the 14-0 lead over Maryland. And it looks as if any hopes for an ACC title game might go out the window for Florida State as we approach the end of the first quarter. Ponder flips one. Down the sideline is Thompson. And he's close to a first down. And a late flag drops out. Just as Thompson got bumped out of bounds, the line judge on the near side dropped his flag. You know, it's funny, talking to some of the Florida State players before the game, I kind of took an informal survey and asked them, if you had a choice, you lose to Florida, but NC State also loses and you go to the ACC championship game. Or you beat Florida and NC State wins and you don't go to the ACC championship game. What would you pick? They said, we beat Florida <laughs> in, in a heartbeat. The offense, number eight. That's a 10-yard penalty. Nice second down. So the penalty will go against the Knolls. Look like you got Taiwan Easterling on the outside blocking against Cody Riggs. You see him number eight in red block. Look like he got a face mask against him. Cody Riggs got his hand up in Easterling's face mask. I don't know. I, I didn't see a hold there. The game clock reads all zeros. So we're going to play one untimed down here to end the first quarter. Ponder walks it down the sideline. Smith jump ball incomplete. Moses Jenkins underneath. Ahmad Black came over the top. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. It'll be third down and long for Florida State when we come back. They trail the Gators 7-3. To us, the little things mean a lot. Add up all our standard features and safety tech, and you've got something big. Announcing the Chrysler Big Finish of 2010. How was it? We'll take it. Awesome. Now, for the first time, get 0% APR financing for 72 months on 2010 Chrysler Town & Country models. Comcast. Dream big.
This is the Dr. Pepper Rivalry Series. Unrivaled competition. And Saturday Night Football continues on ABC with a battle of Big 12 rivals. Oklahoma takes on Oklahoma State. Brent Musburger and Kirk Herbstreit will be there. And another pretty good rivalry game tonight presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Some of you will see Notre Dame USC. Both games are part of the Dr. Pepper rivalry series. Go to ESPN.com, search maps to see where you can find your game. We have a great Dr. Pepper rivalry recap for you here in Tallahassee, Florida. Pretty dominant all time in the series and certainly having won the last six in a row. Yeah, and Florida State. There is a lot of buzz in Tallahassee about maybe this is the year, the opportunity to break that streak. Four man rush on third down and long. Ponder wants to set the screen up to Thompson. Nowhere to go. A lot of white, orange, and blue out there led by Justin Trotteau and Ahmad Black. And now it's fourth down at the 40. Well, you mentioned there is a lot of team speed on this Florida defense. Watch them rally to the ball after they diagnose screen. You're going to have eight white jerseys around the football, and Chris Thompson does as much as he possibly can. But despite the fact that they lost a lot of talent on defense, they still have had top five recruiting classes and have a lot of talent on defense. Another pooch punt. That rolls down inside the 10-yard line. Sean Powell gets the job done again. Well, it was November 29th, 2003 at Florida. That's the last time that FSU won this rivalry game. 55 seconds to go in the game. FSU trailing by three, 34-31. They convert a fourth and 14 to keep the drive alive. And then Chris Ricks to PK Sam. 52-yard game-winning touchdown. And FSU would win it 38-34. And it got ugly after that game as well with those Florida State players walking around with the Gator head. <laughs> is that the real Gator head or was that? It looked real enough that, to me. It did look real. It didn't look like a prop. Now I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> it looked as real as I needed to look. Trey Burton up the middle for about three. I checked that Chris Rainey up the middle for about three. You know, it hadn't been very good field position for Florida. Their last drive started inside their 10 yard line and once again on this drive and we've got to be smart. This this game could come down to two defenses that play well enough against offenses that have struggled and field position could play a big factor. So first downs in this area of the field are, are huge. Jordan Reed now lines up at tight end. As Burton runs the belly option, gives it to Rainey, and Rainey squeezes out to about the 14, maybe the 15-yard line. DeMonte McAllister on the stop for Florida State, so it will be third down and about two and a half. Well, and you get the feeling early in this game that Urban Meyer wants to use the traditional offense of, of Florida with the zone read, and Trey Burton is the one that operates it the best for him. He wants to be in these situations, third and one, two, three yards. He feels very good about their chances. Play clock down to 10. All three quarterbacks are in the huddle. Play clock down to six. Brantley gets them set, takes the snap on third and short, swings it right, caught by Rainey. Lost the football again. Another fumble recovery for Xavier Rhodes. Especially in rivalry games, you just don't want to lose the game in the first quarter. You're not going to win in the first game in the first quarter. Just don't lose it. And two turnovers early for Florida, certainly putting them behind the eight ball. Rainey just tried to make made a great move on the defensive back, Greg Reed, but didn't secure the football. Didn't look like Reed knocked it out. As Rainey made that move, made that move, he just lost control of the ball. Thompson stays on his feet down to the 10 yard line. We approach three minutes gone by in the second quarter of a great rivalry game between Florida and Florida State. Florida 
playing all three of their quarterbacks in the first half. They've turned it over a couple of times, although John Brantley was able to find Robert Clark for a touchdown to give the Gators the lead. A couple of fumble recoveries for Florida State. They couldn't do anything with the last turnover. They try again now. Second down and about two and a half from the 10. Bonnie Pryor up the middle. Touchdown, Florida State. Great to see the fullback get a little bit of love. Jimbo Fisher calls Lonnie Pryor his glue guy. Finally, in a Florida State-Florida game, the Knolls get a touchdown in the red zone. They've been very good this season in the red zone, but historically, at least during the six-game losing streak, they have kicked a lot of field goals. That time they get the seven, and they take the 10-7 lead. Papa Shoes and Brian Greasy with you here in Tallahassee. An electric atmosphere. Bobby Bowden Field at Doak Campbell Stadium. Andre DeBose inside the two. Andre DeBose, oh, he just about got loose. A flag down at the 30-yard line as well. Cut down by Greg Dent. I don't know if I kick it to that guy anymore today. He is fast. During the return, holding number 89 to the city team. That might explain the lane that he has as we take a look at our Chick-fil-A drive recap. And the drive for Florida State was set up by Chris Rainey, coughing it up. Tried to make a move on Greg Reed and simply lost control of the football. Recovered by Xavier Rhodes. Two fumble recoveries for Rhodes, and now here's the touchdown. By yeah, Pryor. and Lonnie Pryor, he was a former tailback, unselfishly made the move to fullback. He's got plenty of speed and moves, rushed for 5,000 yards in high school, so don't sleep on Lonnie Pryor. Jordan Reed on a keeper, and he's got a first down. Out to the 30-yard line, picking up 11. And don't sleep on Jordan Reed either. He is a big man coming right up the middle. You know, I... <laughs> He reminds you a lot of a guy playing in Auburn uh, yesterday, but he has got the speed, he's got the arm. He just needs to learn how to play the position. Hasn't had a whole lot of reps at quarterback. This time Reed will throw it, slings it down the sideline. Jump ball broken up by Reed. Perfect position by Greg Reed in front of Carl Moore. And Greg Reed comes up holding his side. They had good uh, good position, just a jump ball on the outside, and Reed was in perfect position. Looks like he just came down, may have got the wind knocked out of him, came down on his ribs, but good position, good coverage. Greg Reed, he's got all the skills in the world, and Mark Stoops was talking with us this week. He's just got to be more disciplined in his fundamentals and structure. He can be a great player. That'll be a false start against the Gators. False start. Number 76, five-yard penalty, second down. Seven penalties for 55 yards here in the first half for Urban Meyer's team. And again, we were talking with Urban Meyer this week. He said, we've got to stay on schedule. We've got to get our tempo up. That was the whole impetus behind it, running the no-huddle system. And penalties not only hurt you yardage-wise, they also hurt your tempo. Quarterback draw. Reed right up the gut once again. And he picked up nearly 10 yards. It'll still set up third down and five. Jordan Reed only a red shirt freshman from New London, Connecticut, which I have to figure is a quarterback factory. Recruiting rich New London, Connecticut, if you're looking for quarterbacks in Gainesville. <laughs> There's no stone unturned. 
He's got five rushing touchdowns this season, third best for the Gators, but now on third down and long, they go back to Brantley. Throws the slant right at the first down marker, and it's dropped. Frankie Hammond had it in his hands, but took a pop from behind from Michael Harris and coughed it up. Well, and everybody wants to get on John Brantley this year, but he has had inconsistent play from the wide receiver position, and Frankie Hammond's had that ball right in his chest, right at the first down marker, and couldn't bring it in. It hasn't been one person on this offense. It's been every phase of offensive football that has struggled this year, and just so happens that the quarterback takes a lot of heat. Fake punt, Chaz Henry looks for a first down, doesn't get it. The Gators take a chance in their own end. Ochuko Jenije came up, read the fake punt by Chaz Henry and brought him down a yard shy, and the Gators turn it over on downs. You see, he's going to have two blockers out in front. Watch number three for Florida State, Justin Bright, a backup safety, comes in and gets a big hit, and Jenije is there as well. Urban Meyer feeling like he has to generate some momentum and generate some offense and comes back to bite him. Ponder lobs it down the sideline. Rodney Smith's got a step. Touchdown. since the Knolls have had the Gators on the ropes. Well, they've got them on the ropes here in the first half. The last two plays changed the course of this game. Could they have changed the weight, the balance in the state of Florida? ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Aflac. Find out why over 440,000 businesses choose Aflac at Aflac.com. Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. It's been a while since the Knowles put some rings into that trophy case. And they're on the verge of the first time since 1999 of possibly winning the Florida State Championship. They beat Miami earlier this year. In the five years that they have played Florida, where Urban Meyer has been the coach, Florida State has lost by an average of nearly 21 points per game. But they've got a 10-point lead now, taking two turnovers, one on downs and a fumble by Rainey. The fake punt doesn't work. Rainey coughs it up. And Florida State jumping on top of the Gators, 17-7. And how quick those decisions to go for those fake punts and trick plays can come back to bite you. And I know Urban Meyer has been uh, under a lot of pressure this year and trying to jumpstart his team, but he may have hurt them. They keep kicking it to Andre DeBose. This time DeBose can't make them pay though. Barely gets out to the 20 yard line. Bumped out by Greg Reed, back to the touchdown. Yeah, Florida State has been very good this year in their vertical passing game. And look at Rodney Smith with the double move on the outside. Moses Jenkins bites. Rodney Smith is six foot six, 222 pounds. And if he can run routes like that, look out for him in the future. He is a true sophomore. Could be playing a lot of football for Florida State and the Gators have now faked nine punts this season that was the first fake punt that didn't get them a first down and after one play it cost him a touchdown now it's Jeff Dems oh did he get popped left his feet and was depleted by Nick Moody They are going to be hitting down there in a rivalry game. There was no 
question about that coming into this game and you get a little bit of momentum on defense those guys start to feel like they're playing downhill against this Florida offense. Burton went in motion. It's a wide receiver hitch with a flag down and it only picks up about two yards. Terrence Parks held his ground brought down Frankie Hammond but we'll have to check the penalty. It was thrown right at the snap. Illegal shift against the Gators. You get the feeling that this Florida State defense now is going to feed off of the momentum. Five players in the backfield on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. So and not enough players up on the line of scrimmage. And Jimbo Fisher, it looks like he is going to accept the penalty yardage. So it'll be second down and about 12 rather than third down and five or so. Another timeout called by Florida. That's their last here in the first half. Seventeen seven Florida State on top of Florida. The Gators out of timeouts. We have a quick timeout though. Let's go back to the studio and Robert Flores. All right Bob New York Life studio update. LSU has tied the game with Arkansas in the Battle of the Golden Boot. Stephen Ridley caps off a 75 yard drive. They're tied at seven. Meantime, Florida State fans keying in on this game. NC State leading Maryland 14 to seven, although the Terps have cut that lead in half. If the Wolfpack hold on to win, they clinch the ACC Atlantic Division. Bob. All right, Robert, thanks very much. Last week, Florida State got a very emotional, tough road win in Maryland to keep their hopes alive for a divisional title in the ACC. And Mark Stoops, the defensive coordinator for the Gators. His team last week had seen Brian Greasy for the first time in about three weeks, was able to turn the pass rush pressure back up on an opponent because that, that is such a strong aspect of this Knowles defense. Yeah, they've got 41 sacks on the season, and he has changed the attitude and the confidence level of this Florida State defense. Draw play. Demps out to about the 24 yard line. It'll be third down and six. And as Mark Stoops has come to Tallahassee, he has re upped a lot of the pressure that they're able to put on the opponent. They go from 58th in the country to second in sacks. Yeah, and the points allowed is the big one 94th to 15th. They're only giving up an average of 18 points a game this season that has been the biggest difference and he said I had to get these guys heads up they were down on themselves they needed confidence. Gators only had 10 men on the field play clock down to 10. They ran Robert Clark out onto the field after they were already set at the line they're out of timeouts play clock at two just getting the snap off as Brantley slants one over the middle incomplete through it a mile behind Carl Moore. Way too much confusion on offense for Florida. You got guys coming in late. You got the play clock running down. You don't know who's taking the snap from center. Don't know who's calling the audibles. This this offense for Florida just looks like they are out of sync and there's no leadership. And it gets back to you got to have that guy, that guy, that one guy that you know is going to take care of everything. And they are suffering right now. They just get the punt away. Reed lets it bounce. And it takes a Gator hop inside the 30. Down close to the 27 yard line. So Florida State has the ball back in a 10 point lead. And we have our Aflac trivia question. Aflac. How many Florida State head coaches have beaten Florida in their first year? <laughs> well, now, there aren't that many there guys. Hasn't been that many because Bobby Bowden is here for a long time. <laughs> That's only the fifth head coach at this unbelievable football institution. I mean, what a great atmosphere here at Doak Campbell. Ponder with a cutback. 
Brandon Hicks made the stop after a gain of five. Well, now if you're Florida State and specifically Christian Ponder, this game could not have got off to a better start. Two turnovers by Florida and a, and a missed fake punt gave you all the momentum that you need to get a good start. Now 17-7. Now you get into your offense. You settle down in the rivalry game, run your offense, make good decisions, and move the team. Finding a cutback lane is Ty Jones. Out to about the 45-yard line. And a great way to get that going is on the ground with Ty Jones and the weakness of this Florida defense is up front in the offensive line for Florida State is the best part of their offense. Rodney Hudson, number 62, the left guard, clears the way for Ty Jones, and they come in averaging 184 yards on the ground. And No gain on first down that time. And between this offensive line, they have 171 career starts. And that's the strength. And they've protected Christian Ponder this year. And Hudson is the undisputed leader. He's making his 46th career start today on senior day. And he's one of the three finalists for the Outland Trophy alongside Gabe Karimi and Soldier from, uh, from the University of Colorado. And there's no doubt he will be playing a lot of football on Sunday. Jones motions out of the backfield. Instead, it's Lonnie Pryor. A couple of yards as Jelani Jenkins was there to make the stop. And a great barometer of success in wins and losses this season for the Knowles has been their ability to run the football. Well, and it complements what Christian Ponder can do. You don't want him to be back there throwing the ball on every down. And you see in their wins, they're averaging over 200 yards on the ground. And in those three losses, and Oklahoma in there is North Carolina State and North Carolina. But those those two games against North Carolina, North Carolina State were very close ball game. Only lost by two points to North Carolina and should have beaten NC State if they don't fumble on the last play. Ponder, a first down catch made. To the 40-yard line goes Bo Relliford. Going to be an out route by Relliford. Comes up and gets some contact, and that's that's a smart play by Relliford. You can't push off because the official will see that, but if you lead with your shoulder and your head and get some contact, they're not going to call that. That's a heady play by a junior uh, tight end for Florida State. Well, that is not who Gator fans want to see go down. Ahmad Black. He's a senior that's certainly going to be playing on Sundays as well. And his right leg is hurt. We'll step aside. Back in Tallahassee with the answer to our AFLAC trivia question. How many Florida State head coaches have beaten Florida in their first year at FSU? Kind of a trick question. Uh, None. <laughs> See only four previous coaches. That duck is tricky. Bonder on a slam. Rodney Smith has another first down. Ahmad Black was able to get to the sideline on his own power, so we'll see if he's able to return for Florida. They bring a pressure inside, the cross dog blitz, the linebackers come inside, and Christian Ponder stays composed in the pocket and delivers. And Rodney Smith is having a big ball game. And there's Black trying to shake it off as best he can. Jones brought down a loss of at least a yard. Jay Howard made the stop. And if you're Florida now, you're down 17-7, and Florida State has a second down inside your 30-yard line. You have got to get a stop on defense and fast. 
cannot allow them to go in and make this a, a 24 to 7 football game because your offense is not built to come from behind. That's what happened against South Carolina. They've got to keep this game close so that they can continue to run that zone read offense. Ponder on a keeper. Plenty of room. About a yard and a half shy of a first down. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary to this point with four and a half minutes to go in the first half. It was a 7-3 lead not long ago for the Gators, but the Knolls have answered with 10 straight. Actually 14 straight to make it 17 to 7 yards somewhat even about a 50 yard advantage for Florida State, but it's the two big turnovers. Yeah, the two turnovers, the two fumbles and then the fake the fake punt that uh, turned the football over on downs. Certainly the story with third down and two coming here for Florida State. Ponder throws it low left. The catch made by Pryor depends on the spot. It looks to be good enough for a first down by about a half a yard. It is. Great job by Lonnie Pryor going down and getting that football. He is a versatile player, as we mentioned, a tailback in high school and made the unselfish decision to help the team and move to fullback. But that is a great catch to go down and get that football, cradle it into your body and get a big first down for your team. Now it's Ty Jones. Spun down after a gain of a couple to the 15 by Jonathan Bostic. You know, we were talking about Pryor before, and I mentioned that Jimbo Fisher refers to him as a glue guy. He says he's the guy that helps keep my organization and my offense together. He's got that spirit about him, that leadership quality. Reminds him a lot of Edgar Bennett, the great uh, halfback slash fullback that played for Florida State in the late 80s and then went on to play for the Green Bay Packers. A very unselfish player, the kind of guys that you need on offense. Floats it wide open, back left corner of the end zone, dropping it as Relaford. What a break for the Gators. Florida State thought that they could get Bo Relaford matched up on the best corner for Florida is Jenkins, number one, and they run a slant and go. It's called the Sluggo. And Janoris Jenkins feeling confident that he could jump the route. Wide open and Relaford just dropped it. So Florida State calls timeout with 2.53 to go here in the first half. Ahmad Black, by the way, just did come back on the field for the Gators. So we'll step aside. Florida State on top by 10 looking for more. The visitors arrived. They said they came in peace. They lied. ABC's V. They return Tuesday, January 4th on ABC. After the timeout, third and nine for Florida State. Ponder all day. Comes underneath to Easterling. Touchdown. Seven Florida State. Here's Easterling right here. He's just going to come down and run a return route. Take the coverage out. All the coverage will be gone, and he'll be wide open underneath. And Christian Ponder puts it right in front of him for an easy score. But that that is the perfect call on third down, knowing that Florida's Florida defense was going to be playing deep in the secondary. And Easterling runs a patient route, makes a good catch, and finishes. It has been.
been a while for Florida State where they have even had a lead in this game, been competitive in this game, much less found a way to win. Don't count out the Gators, though. There are a lot of champion players over on the sideline wearing blue and orange. Well, there's a lot of pride on that sideline, but somebody has to come out and bring that pride out of them. Somebody has to light the fire. Can't just come from the head coach, can't come from the assistant coaches. It's got to come from the players. It's got to come from the seniors. This kick is boomed by Hopkins out of the back of the end zone. Saturday Night Football continues on ABC, a battle of Big 12 rivals. It's Oklahoma taking on Oklahoma State. Brent Musburger and Kirk Herbstreit will have the call. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Some of the nation will also see Notre Dame USC. Both games are a part of the Dr. Pepper rivalry series. Go to ESPN.com and search maps to see where you can find your game. When we talk about senior leadership, Florida doesn't have any seniors at the skill positions on offense. Blockers out in front for Reed. Good strong run by Jordan Reed out across the 30 for a first down. Marcus White trailed him and made the stop. And you might see Jordan Reed considerably the rest of this game. Urban Meyer says that his learning curve has been phenomenal for a young player learning the position of quarterback. He wants to find out what he has in number 11. This time he gives it to Rainey. Can Rainey turn the corner? He's got a first down and more. Out to the 44-yard line. Good block on the edge by Frankie Hammond. 13 more yards for Chris Rainey and a Gator first down. Well, and Chris Rainey came into this game averaging almost seven yards a carry. I mean, he is the guy they have got to get the ball to because he can make plays on the perimeter. Reed steps back, looks to throw. Uncorks a deep one, right down the seam. Broken up, intended for Hammond. Reed was there, Xavier Rhodes combines to knock it away as well. Great coverage by Xavier Rhodes, the red shirt freshman, number 27. He is right there, step for step, and then Greg Reed comes over and finishes it off. And in today's football, that is not an easy hit for Greg Reed. You got to come over and dislodge the football, but not hit him in the head. Nice job. Keeper for Reed. Another first down and more for Jordan Reed. So the Florida State 40 yard line, and finally some rhythm offensively for the Gators. It really has to be hard for Gator fans when you spend the better part of four years watching Tim Tebow run an offense as well as it can be run in college to then say goodbye to a legendary player and go through these growing pains with John Brantley who might be kind of ill suited to this offense and Jordan Reed's a redshirt freshman. Rainey with some space though. Rainey down the sideline. Here come the Gators. And you can see the tempo, the tempo, the tempo. That's all Coach Adazio, the offensive coordinator, talked about when we talked to them this week. We've got to get first down so that we can get the no huddle going and get our tempo right. Looked like Reed was about to step back and throw, and instead he kind of jitterbugs his way up the middle for two yards to the 20-yard line. I think he did have an opportunity to throw. He had routes down the field. That's kind of the run pass option that's a staple of Urban Meyer's offense. And you can see him. Let's get it going. I don't care if it was a bad play. Just keep going. Run as many plays as fast as we can. Florida State struggling to get players off the field. And it looks like they may have to call a timeout on defense. Some pushing and shoving after the whistle as well. Mike Pouncey squaring off with DeMonte McAllister. Of course, the Gators are out of timeouts. And it was the Gators that got into the end zone first. Florida State opened up with a field goal. Brantley, though, underneath to the true freshman Robert Clark. And Lonnie Pryor scored the first of three touchdowns 
for Florida State, followed up by Rodney Smith and then Taiwan Easterlin. And a couple of those touchdowns set up. One, a turnover on downs. Brian Greasy, when Florida tried to fake a punt, didn't get there for the first time this season. And also, we've had fumbles in the first half as Chris Rainey coughed one up that set up Florida State for their second touchdown. Yeah, and now you're down 17 points, and this is clearly the most important drive of this game for the Florida offense. And they've moved it down the field in impressive fashion. Five rushes on the ground, 60 yards. Now they bring John Brantley back onto the field. Brantley drops back. Fires one up the seam, intercepted. Picked up by Michael Harris. Another turnover for the Gators. A flag flies on the return by Mike Harris. It was well after the interception that the flag was thrown, so it's most likely a block in the back. The ball should stay with Florida State. And a frustrating first half for Urban Meyer continues. Following the interception, there's an illegal block in the back by number 13 of the intercepting team. That penalty will be half the distance. It's first and 10. And this, it's hard on a quarterback to be on the sideline and then come off cold and try to throw the football. Keep an eye on the corner, freeze it right here. You're going to see they're going to run a corner route with the wide receiver, but John Brantley does not see the corner fall off underneath it and tries to force that football in. And just a bad read from John Brantley, but it's hard. It's hard to come off that sideline. You had this drive of six, seven, eight plays where you've had the momentum in the tempo and then you come off the sideline and ask him to throw a ball in into the uh, teeth of the defense and that's tough. Well, Christian Ponder can take a couple of knees here inside the five yard line. Florida is out of timeouts and we'll go to halftime with Florida State on top 24 to 7 and we'll see if the Gators can regroup again. There are a lot of champions and a lot of pride in that Gator locker room. But unfortunately, the Gator with the most championship pedigree and probably as much, if not more, pride and courage than any player in college football is now playing for the Denver Broncos as they don't have Tim Tebow to turn to. They have to find answers at quarterback, and it's been a tough year for Urban Meyer to find those answers. Uh, Christian Ponder with a little Gator chomp as he heads back to the locker room. Florida State with a commanding lead at halftime. Urban Meyer's team will have the ball to start the second half. It's time now for the halftime report. We'll come back shortly to Tallahassee. Back at Doe Campbell Stadium set for the second half in our Dr. Pepper rivalry series, Florida State. Up 24 to 7 over Florida. Bob Shoes and Brian Greasy with you here in Tallahassee. Philosophically, what changes for the Gators? They went with all three quarterbacks in the first half. Do they do the same in the second half or down by this margin? Do you have to change your way of thinking? Well, they get the ball to start the second half, and I think Jordan Reed was their most productive quarterback in the first half. He had 10 rushes, 63 yards. I think he gives them the best opportunity to get back in this football game, and if they can score, It'll be down 24-14. Let's take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Some first half pictures and there were some momentum changing plays made by Christian Ponder and the offense for Florida State. Yeah, and Christian Ponder took advantage of the mistakes that Florida made, turning the football over here. Taiwan Easterling uh, with a big touchdown and then making plays on defense, turning the football over. Mike Harris with a big interception to stop a drive at the very end of the first half and Florida State had all the momentum on offense defense and special teams. Although this first drive I think for the Florida State defense will be their most important of this game to establish the second half dominance. Returnable kick for Andre DeBose. Knocked down at about the 25 yard line by Mike Harris as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. 
And the turnovers were a huge factor, obviously, and add into it not only three turnovers for Florida, but one of the touchdowns for Florida State came off of a turnover on downs yeah. when the game was yeah. faked the punt and didn't and, get there. And I, that's a turnover in my mind. And of the six drives that Florida offense had in the first half, four of them resulted in turnovers, and that's the difference in the game. Jordan Reed. Gain of about four. Everett Dawkins made the tackle for the Knolls. You know, and to further, you know, this discussion about the kind of style of offense that Florida can run in the second half, I think if they get Jordan Reed involved in this offense and commit to him at the quarterback position and get a drive put together here, they'd only be down by 10 points if they score a touchdown, then they just run the regular offense. Reed up the middle to about the 30 yard line where Urban Meyer told us this past week that he has really come on, especially in the last few weeks. The Jordan Reed's accelerated growth has been phenomenal. I know you went back and watched tape of the last few Florida games. What did you see in Reed's play? Well, he certainly has all the physical attributes. And now, you know, he, he missed 22 of 24 practices in the fall. Didn't have an opportunity to learn the quarterback position. He's been doing it on the fly, starting to make better reads and being smart with the football. On third down, though, it's back to Brantley. And he'll scramble and go down. Brandon Jenkins there to make the stop. That'll go as a sack. The 11th of the season for Brandon Jenkins. And Brandon Jenkins is, is an effort player, one of the surprise players for this Florida State defense. He doesn't get to the quarterback on his first move, but perseveres and gets the sack. Mark Stoops was glowing about Jenkins on our conference call. Fair catch immediately called for and made at the 29 yard line by Greg Reed. So as ineffective as the quarterback play has been for the Gators, Christian Ponder had a terrific first half. The senior trying to beat Florida for the one and only time in his career. Two touchdowns and 142 yards in the first half. Well, and he has come under some criticism this season because he didn't have the kind of numbers that he had in 2009. In 2009, in only nine games, he averaged over 300 yards a game, had 14 touchdowns and only seven interceptions. And, but he has come into this season and done what has been asked of him, and that's beneficial. Play action on first down. Wide open up the sideline was Willie Halstead, but he stumbled coming out of his break. A huge cushion given to Halstead. He had to talk about Christian Ponder. The thing that Jimbo Fisher mentioned to us, he said his toughness is unprecedented, that he's played with elbow injuries, broken ribs. In the North Carolina game, he played all the way through. They didn't even know he was hurt. And after the game, they took him back in the trainer's room and took 500 cc's of fluid out of his elbow. Thompson breaks a tackle and he has a first down. This offensive line starting to get their rhythm and starting to dictate and Thompson has the speed to get away from Tratow the defensive end on the corner number 94 and then he cuts it up. We were talking with him this week. He said, I think about first downs and touchdowns. I think on every single time I touch the football, I can gain 20 yards. And if I don't gain 20 yards, it's only because I'm running for a touchdown. Back to Thompson again. Three yards up the middle. Ahmad Black shaking up in the first half, starts the second half, makes the tackle. This is the time in, in these kinds of games, in rivalry games, that offensive linemen love. This is the end of their regular season for them. We're going against our arch rival. We've got them on the ropes. If we can put together a ground game here in this drive, we can put some, do some damage and put this game away. Second down for Thompson, so a chance for the Gators to get off the field. Justin Trateau made the stop. It'll be third down and seven. 
Jimbo Fisher was very aggressive with his play calling in the first half. Go routes, double moves, slant and goes. He was taking advantage of the opportunities that Florida gave him with some turnovers. It's critical that he doesn't lose that aggressiveness in the second half with his play calling and allows his senior quarterback to make some throws because Florida certainly has the talent to come back. Third down at about six and a half. Play clock down to four. Ponder gets the snap off, stumbles a bit. Wide open, a first down kicks for Relaford. It's a very similar play to what Relaford did earlier in the game. He's right here, he's just gonna come up and run a simple out route. He's gonna engage with Jelani Jenkins, the linebacker gets lost and then slips and falls down and Relaford's wide open for a big conversion. That's a tough matchup for Jelani Jenkins. To the sideline, Bert Reed lost it when he stepped out of bounds, but they will say that he had control inbounds. The catch is good for a gain of nearly nine, maybe 10 yards right at the 30 yard line. Looks to be a half yard shy of a first down. And that's that's the aggressive play calling that that you need when you're up in these kinds of situations. Jimbo Fisher dials up the pass on first down, which puts you in a situation now in second and short to continue this drive. And that's what you see from the teams that play offense like Oregon that score a lot of points. Doesn't matter what the situation is. They're throwing the football. Right up the middle, right at the first down marker, Lonnie Pryor is met. Omar Hunter was there to make the stop. Depends on the spot. Looks like he's a half yard shy. Florida State's going to hurry up before Florida can get set and go for it on third down. And Pryor again was cut down. What a great job by that defensive front for the Gators. That time again, it was Omar Hunter that came through. Now it's fourth down. Well, you know there's a lot of pride on that Florida defense. And now Jay Howard is down and injured. So while the trainers take a look at Jay Howard, a reminder, this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, Frank Gore leads the 49ers against Larry Fitzgerald and the Cardinals. A critical division matchup. Both teams need a win to stay alive in the NFC West. Niners, Cardinals, ESPN's Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. I guess someone has to win that division. <laughs> Some of the fans here, their immediate reaction when they saw Howard shaken up was that, oh, he might be trying to stop Florida State from running back to the line, snapping it on fourth down and going quickly. But of course, that means that Jay Howard has to come off the field. The last guy I would think that Urban Meyer would want off the field on fourth down and about a half yard if Florida State does indeed go for it is his 302 pounds junior defensive tackle. And he is still down. And it looks like they're working on his right knee. Yeah. No, he's up. So right brings up a fourth and inch of situation and I don't see any movement from the kicker Dustin Hopkins for Florida State. I don't think there's any doubt that Jimbo Fisher is going to go for it here on fourth and short. And this is as much about attitude as anything. Jimbo Fisher realizes that this is a rivalry game and this is an opportunity for me to send a message to my guys about how I want to establish our organization and our foundation and our team for the future. He'll try to sneak it and get it on fourth down. Christian Ponder with the keeper and he moves the chains. And for Jimbo Fisher, it's about not leaving anything to chance. It's about controlling your own destiny in this game. And when you have fourth and, and inches with a, a veteran offensive line and a senior quarterback, you put your trust in your players. You develop them as best you can, and then you trust them to make plays on Saturday. Tenth 
play of this drive for Florida State. Ponder hit as he throws, looking end zone. The catch made. Touchdown, Willie Halstead. to make sure that the catch was clean for Willie Halstead. It was ruled a touchdown. It's a perfect throw from Christian Ponder, and Halstead brings it in, maintains control all the way to the ground, and I think that's a catch. And the only way that they could possibly overturn this is as he goes to the ground, does it look like he might not have control, and does the ball hit the turf clearly he well, has tucked got, it yeah. away already there and then when he rolls over he still got it and it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call which was a touchdown right so this is probably a pretty quick review after further review the ruling on the field stands touchdown You couldn't see this coming as Christian Ponder stands in, takes a shot, throws another touchdown. Since the start of the second quarter, Christian Ponder is 9 of 11 with three touchdowns. When Florida has given Florida State opportunities, especially with the short field, the Knolls have taken advantage, and that time it was just an impressive drive. Great mix of the run and pass, marched it right down the field. And now that ball goes out of bounds. They said it didn't sneak inside the pylon, so this will come out to the 40-yard line. A mistake by Dustin Hopkins that almost worked perfectly, almost hooked it right around the inside of the pylon. Let's go back to the touchdown. Yeah, Christian Ponder did not have a great pocket to throw from. Take a look at the tight end, Relaford, trying to block on the on the perimeter. He misses, he whiffs, both guys whiff, and then right here as a quarterback, you got to make a decision. You know you're going to get hit. Ponder stays in there and delivers the football under duress right on the money. And the senior quarterback has saved some of his best football for his last game at Doe Campbell Stadium. Trey Burton back at quarterback. Looks for the pitch man. It's Demps. No chance. Mr. Alexander out on the edge to make the stop. You go back and look at Christian Ponder. I mean, he's outgaining the Florida offense tonight, and certainly he has been a staple for Florida State at the quarterback position and has led his team tonight catch made by Hammond about a yard shy of a first down good throw on the move that time from Jordan Reed third down and one we haven't seen too many third down and ones for Florida no and if I had third and one I'd give it to the 6 3 240 pound quarterback just like Cam Newton right right up the middle leaping over the pile and picking up the first down is Reed and he looked a lot like Cam Newton on that play. <laughs> and he might be hurt. He took a vicious hit there from Nick Moody, the safety number 10, came in and got a late hit on him. He's still down. It's 
So while the trainers take a look at Jordan Reed, let's check in with Robert. All right, Bob, AT&T All-American Player of the Week update. How about UConn running back Jordan Todman as a nominee? Three touchdowns, 175 yards in today's win against Cincinnati. If UConn can beat South Florida next week, they're going to a BCS Bowl. You can text VOTE to 345-345 to take part. Bob. All right, Robert, thanks very much. So now it's Trey Burton. And as Reed was helped off, first and 10 Gators in plus territory. Wrestling for maybe a yard up the middle was a frustrated Chris Rainey. Well, this defense for Florida State is starting to sell out against the run. Eight, nine guys up around the line of scrimmage. They are not going to let Florida run the zone read and beat them on the ground. They are going to force Jordan Reed, Trey Burton to throw the football if they want to get back in this football game. And in response to that, Urban Meyer runs John Brantley back in. Play clock at eight. Brantley will sling it to the sideline. Has a connection with Carl Moore. Five yards shy of a first down. And you wonder, Brian Greasy, down 31 to seven, do you have to change your philosophy now? We talked about it at halftime, yeah. but to, you, you might have to throw the ball and just throw yourself back in the game if possible and maybe give the game to John Brantley well, the rest of the way. And that's what happened exactly the same type of game when Florida played South Carolina. They got down early, had to throw the football, and it got worse. Four-man rush. Brantley throws it away. He got hit hard from the blind side. He's slow to get up. Brandon Jenkins drilled Bradley just as he threw it out of bounds. Yeah, there was nobody open there. They tried to run a quick out. You can't hold on to the football. You know Brandon Jenkins is coming fast around that corner. And now fourth and five, you have to go for it. And it's going to be fourth and more. A late flag dropped out. They called it intentional grounding. They were about to go for it on fourth down at about five and a half. And now the offense goes off the field. Intentional grounding will rob them of three or four more yards. They're not going to go for it on fourth and nine. You see, they tried to run the quick out, and the receiver fell down. And that's why when he threw the ball to the sideline, he was expecting his receiver to be out there, threw it away, and got called. Shanked punt as well. Can it get any worse for the Gators? Chaz Henry's punt will be marked out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. A 15-yard punt. ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by your local Lexus dealer. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And AT&T. We think possible. What a scene it is here in Tallahassee. A lot of Gator fans making their way from Gainesville to see a great in-state rivalry game between Florida and Florida State, but it's been dominated by the Knolls so far. Chris Thompson got tripped up, or he might have had a big crease to run through, about a four-yard gain. He almost took it to the house again. He's had three runs of 70-plus yards for touchdowns just this year, so you know he's got the speed to go the distance, and Chris, Christian Potter is going to continue to feed him the football. Ponder runs it. He gets popped. Lost about a half yard. A.J. Jones came up and made the stop. A.J. Jones, an unbelievable story as well. He was in fetal distress at birth. Doctors actually said there was a 50-50 chance his mom or he wouldn't make it. His dad at the time was given the choice. If we're going to save one or the other, who should we save? And his dad said, how do you make that choice? Uh. Well, it turns out he was born at three and a half pounds. He was so small, they brought him home in cabbage patch doll clothes and told his parents he will never develop fully, he will never play sports. Well, how about this? He's a linebacker at UF. <laughs> Wide open. 
is Rodney Smith. Another Gator defensive back lost his footing, and that gave Smith the sideline and an easy first down for Florida State, a gain of 18. Jimbo Fisher dialing all the right buttons, and uh, the defense for Florida having trouble losing their footing. Cody Riggs on the last play fell down, and that's why Rodney Smith was wide open, but Jimbo Fisher continuing to be aggressive in his play call. He's going to throw the football. There is no running up to score in a rivalry game. Chris Thompson up the middle for about a yard. How about the efficiency, though, of Christian Ponder? I mean, again, since the start of the second quarter, He's hitting on about 90% completion rate. He's thrown three touchdowns. It's the 13th time in his career that he's got a multiple touchdown game and the sixth time this year. Well, and when you can run the football and throw it and do both of those efficiently, you're going to have numbers like Christian Ponder has. And they haven't had as good a balance this season in the times that they've lost. And tonight they've put it all together and they are playing their best football, no doubt at the end of the year. Design rollout again right up against the sideline is Burt Reed. About two yards shy of a first down. Drop back play action. Now they decide to roll Christian Ponder out. The change up allows the offensive line a little bit of break. Don't have to sit back there and protect. And this is a, this is not an easy throw rolling it away from your dominant arm throwing to your left. It's hard to be accurate in that situation. He did a nice job of getting his shoulders back towards the line of scrimmage for an accurate ball. Florida has to get a stop here on defense. Third down and a couple of yards. Ponder hit as he throws incomplete. The blitz came from Janoris Jenkins. And Ponder just barely got it away. Now fourth down and about two. Yeah, Janoris Jenkins at the bottom of your screen is going to come hard off the edge. Unblocked and Ponder never saw him and that's a vicious hit right there from Janoris Jenkins who went high. Could have easily called that. That's a little bit of a frustration hit from Janoris Jenkins. Sean Powell tries to angle the low line drive and does so down to the corner and does well inside the 10 yard line. It goes out of bounds at the five. Well, Florida State changes field position again. 35 yard punt. This is the Dr. Pepper rivalry series. Unrivaled competition. Terrible field position again for the Gators. Trey Burton tries to turn the corner. Flag down as he gets to the eight yard line. The referee threw the flag from right behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be holding against Florida. just all going the opposite direction for Urban Meyer and it's hard to believe that at this point last year Florida was 11 and 0 and ranked number one in the country and the complete 180 that they have done in one year's time is just unprecedented. Rainey another flag thrown from the secondary as he goes down inside the three. Terrence Parks came up to make the stop. Chop block against the Gators. I would think that one would probably be declined by Jimbo Fisher as Rainey 
Might have lost a yard on the carry. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist, number 81 offense. That penalty's declined. Brings up second down. So well, Brian Gracie, I guess you look at it one of two ways for the Gators. You have taken a huge step back, but it's such a great program. They have built a kingdom of sports between the basketball program and the football program at Gainesville. Maybe you can absorb a year like this. Well, what's most surprising to me is kind of the lack of discipline and the lack of organization that you see from this football team, from offense to defense to special teams in all areas. It's not the, the style of play that we've come to expect and the precision from an Urban Meyer coach team. And certainly there have been adversity and there have been injuries and there's been change and you've lost players to the draft. But you still have more talent than 99% of the teams in the country anyway. Brantley from the end zone on third and nine. Comes underneath to Rainey, and he's got a first down. It looked like he went down by the face mask as well. Tough to tell. His head jerked back as if his face mask had been grabbed. No flag comes out. That's still a great third down conversion, though, as Brantley finds Rainey on a crossing route. Yeah, not a lot of room for Brantley to throw this ball, but an accurate throw and give uh, John Brantley credit for standing in there, continuing to fight. There is no quit in number 12 in white. And who knows, he may be thinking this is his last stand. Again, an underneath pass to Rainey. Could you have expected Florida to not take a step back once Tim Tebow leaves? Oh, certainly you expect some kind of drop off, but this is more than a drop off. This is kind of they got hit in the stomach and they're trying to catch their breath. And everybody that's been getting pounded by Florida over the last five years in Urban Meyer's coaching reign now is taking it out on them. There is no love loss for the Florida game. Draw play to Demps. First down and more. Well, from third down and long inside their own five yard line, Florida puts together a couple of first downs out to the 35 as Jeff Demps picks up 11. And just like that, John Brantley gets you out of a hole out to the 35 yard line with a couple of completions and a run. And now you take him out of the game and in comes Trey Burton. Three yards for Burton. It's been a physical front seven. And add in those safeties as well for Florida State as Terrence Parks came up and helped on the stop. Well, you see, when they bring in Burton or they have Reed at the quarterback position, Florida State changes their defense completely. They decide to come with all of their players for the quarterback and not worry about throwing the ball at all. Burton slipped and fell. Looked like he had an alley, and he is frustrated. Picks up three yards, but it could have been more. It'll be third down and three. And Brantley comes back. Burton had a chance, a good block on the edge, and he was trying to cut that upfield. And, you know, as it turns night here in Tallahassee, that grass gets a little la layer of dew on it, and it becomes very slippery. When it changes from light to dark in any football game in any stadium you got to be aware of that grass and Florida is not going to get the third down snap off before the clock ends the third quarter so we'll step aside Florida trying to mount some kind of comeback here in Tallahassee they are loving it as we start the fourth quarter here at Doak Campbell. The Florida State Seminoles trying to break a six game losing streak head to head against Florida. Third down and a short three closer to two. Quick handoff right up the middle of first down for Rainey. And the Gators keep the drive alive as we start the fourth quarter. Is there any fight left in Florida? We believe so. But can they convert get some points and make it a game again? Well, I think that that play call there on third and three to run the ball in a physical fashion told you there's no doubt if they didn't make it, they were going for it on fourth down.
fumbled snap. Burton down inside the 40. Check that Brantley, a loss of about 10. Well, and this ball comes up high and to the left. Mike Pouncey again, and reminiscent of the first couple games of the year. And right there is a quarterback. You get outside the pocket, it was a called pass play. You got to throw the ball out of bounds. Even though you know your center made a mistake, a bad snap, don't take one mistake and make it worse. You had an opportunity to throw it out of bounds outside the pocket, and you don't do it. Draw play on second and 19, and Demps slipped again. How many times have we seen a Gator slip and fall, offensively and defensively? Well, there was a hole there for Demps, but he started slipping as soon as he got the football, and it's certainly slick down there now. Trey Burton slipped and fell, and it looked like he had a cutback lane a few plays ago. Third down and a mile. Bradley into traffic over the middle, incomplete. Flag comes out late. Terrence Parks jumped right over the top of Ali. Robert Clark was in the area as well. A couple of Gator receivers, one on top of the other. This might be pass interference. Pass interference on the defense, number 15. This is a very fortunate turn of events for Florida. John Brantley just throws the ball randomly in the area of two wide receivers, and Terrence Parks is trying to make a play on the ball. The ball was thrown so off target that Parks was trying to get to the ball, and in the course of that, ran into the wide receiver and they threw the penalty. It looked like he jumped right in between Ali and Clark. <laughs> First blush, I thought it was a good call. I thought he jumped up the backside of Stephen Ali. Not sure after seeing the replay. First and ten. A break for the Gators. Trap handoff and Rainey. Down to about the 37-yard line. Very close to another Gator first down. And I'm quite honestly, I'm surprised that we have seen this three-headed quarterback consistently throughout this game for Florida. I thought coming into this game that Urban Meyer would stick with Trey Burton and with Jordan Reed in this football game and try to run the zone read almost exclusively. But I think the reason why we've seen more of John Brown is because they're behind 31 to seven in this ball game. Took a while for the officials to set the ball ready for play. So they reset the play clock second down and one. And now it's Burton lining up the quarterback. Burton counters the opposite way. First down to the 30-yard line. We check in with Robert. Good news for Florida State fans. Maryland had scored 24 unanswered points, capped off by Davey O'Brien and Torrey Smith hooking up. NC State has added a field goal to cut the lead to seven. But if this score holds, then Florida State advances to the ACC championship game next week. Robert, it keeps getting better for the Knowles. <laughs> Up the middle goes Burton. Down to about the 25-yard line. A gain of five more. Three minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. You know, my question is, if Florida State continues to dominate this football game, does Jimbo Fisher allow them to put the score of the NC State Maryland game up on this jumbotron to get the reaction and let his team know what's going on in the potential ACC championship race? I don't know. I think I'd put it up there. I think he might put it up there if you're up 31 to 7 with five minutes to go and that game goes final. <laughs> Maybe not before then, though. And off to Demps. Down to the 16 yard line. Again, this announcement was made to the crowd pregame at the coach's request, meaning Jimbo Fisher. We want no distractions. They will not be showing the score of the NC State game. Now, if NC State, as you heard Robert Flores tell you, wins that game, then. The Knolls are knocked out of the ACC championship game. But if Maryland beats NC State, then Florida State is in. And they have a chance to go to the BCS. Demps inside the 15-yard line. Well, the way that Florida is running their offense right now, even if they run it flawlessly, it's going to eat so much time off the clock that 
I don't know that a comeback's possible. At some point, you have to try to get yardage in chunks down 31-7. Well, the way the only way they get yardage in chunks is by Chris Rainey or Jeff Demps breaking a run, and they don't have any passing game to speak of. They don't have a quarterback that's confident in throwing, and they don't have wide receivers that have proven they can catch it. So this is their offense. Burton flags down. Boy, he fought hard. Lost the football. Picked up, and they will rule him down by contact. It's going to be holding against Florida. That was the 17th play of this drive. Number 67, 10 yards from the previous spot, second down. You wonder as well if they may review whether or not Dems fumbled the ball or check that Burton fumbled the ball. That looked like that ball might have been on its way out before his knee touched. Yeah, it certainly did. And it was such a clear recovery by Terrence Parks that Florida State would get the football if they rule it a fumble. Jimbo Fisher is going to call timeout. Yeah. Jimbo Fisher, I think, looked up the at the big play. board right, here at Doe Campbell yeah. Stadium, and he wants them to review whether or not Burton fumbled the ball. The officials didn't stop the game as if they were going to go up to the replay booth. So Jimbo Fisher stopped the game for them. We'll find out when we come back if it is a fumble. Indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. And Brian Greasy, we found it while we were away. And it is a Florida fumble and a Knowles recovery. Yeah, clearly that ball was out before his knee was down. And the ball was recovered immediately by Florida State. Florida State ball on the 12 yard line. So there's your indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. The clear recovery as well. And it is a turnover. Another giveaway by the Florida offense. Dan Hicks knocked it out for Florida State. So now the Knolls back to the offense at their own 12 yard line. And maybe that last gasp for Florida goes down right there. Chris Thompson for a yard. The Gators came into today plus three on the season in the turnover margin. And it's the opposite today, minus four. And it's almost as if it's minus five because what is not included in that four turnover category is the fact that they faked the punt and turned it over on downs when they didn't get the first down on the fake. Yeah, and on the road against your rival, you know, with an offense that's struggling, and you mix in those, those turnovers, and it's not surprising what the scoreboard reads. Chris Thompson out to about the 15 yard line and you're obviously if you are the Gators going to try to rip the ball out Thompson slow to get up and a flag was thrown from the secondary. After the play personal foul unnecessary roughness number 84 offense. Yeah, and this, this may start to get chippy, but you got to be smart. Rodney Smith downfield blocking. And I don't know about that. That's that's the guy is trying to block, trying to get his block on the second level. The guy's standing up and he blocks him. How is that a personal foul? Well, the official did say after the play, so maybe he believed that Rodney Smith should have heard the whistle or known the play was over. Ponder on a keeper, and he goes down at about the seven-yard line. William Green made the stop. And so now the Knolls are going to have to punt from their own end zone. But that will take us inside of nine minutes to play. 
That's got to feel good for these Florida State seniors to come out and perform the way that they have tonight in their last game in Doak Campbell Stadium and, and in front of their home fans. That's, that's something that I love about college football is the way that seniors are embraced and the way that the rest of the team plays for them in their final game at home in their careers. Florida was coming after the kick. Henry was able to get it away and it will roll to midfield. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Florida with great field position when we come back, but in a deep hole. ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. Chevrolet. Dr. Pepper, there's nothing like a pepper. Images of battles past between Florida and Florida State. Papa Shoes and Brian Greasy here in Tallahassee. Jimbo Fisher's team hasn't beaten Florida since November 29th, 2003. Could he do it in his first year? John Brantley over the middle, incomplete, intended for Carl Moore. ABC's winter wipeout. It's the same show with snow, with more spills, thrills, and lots of chills. Winter wipeout premieres Thursday, January 6th on ABC. That's like me on the ski slopes, winter wipeout. <laughs> it off to Jeff Demps and Demps maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Anthony McLeod was there to bring down Demps. Uh, and you got, can't say enough about this Florida State defense. I mean we talk about the turnovers but they're the ones that have forced these turnovers and Mark Stoops the defensive coordinator has come in and changed the mindset and the attitude and the confidence of this Florida State defense and for them to be in the fourth quarter only giving up seven points. Tremendous effort. Brantley trying to change the protection or the play with Florida State showing a middle blitz. Play clock at seven. Third down and long. Fires one right. It's just behind Moore and incomplete. And now it's fourth down and 11. And Florida's probably going to have to go for it. That's a tough position for John Brantley to be put in. Sure Don't pick is. up anything on first down. Don't pick up anything on second down with different quarterbacks. All right, kid, third down 11. Get in there and show us what you got. And here comes the punt unit. He's been in a tough position all year. It's not just tonight. John Brandley has been asked to do some things that are not his M.O. And he didn't, uh, didn't have any chance on the last one. Reed makes a fair catch as Florida does punt down 31-7 with seven and a half minutes to go on the fourth. Here are Tostitos BCS standings. Oregon survived a scare from Arizona, but Boise State could not do the same, losing in overtime to Nevada. Wisconsin blows out Northwestern. And off to Chris Thompson. Up the middle out to about the 14 yard line and of course Ohio State lopsided today over Michigan and now some pushing and shoving after the whistle and a quarterback change for Florida State Christian Ponder got a bit of a curtain call EJ Manuel the sophomore MVP of the Gator Bowl last year he is four and one as a starter and he takes over for Christian Ponder. Yeah and a red shirt sophomore he's got good size he's 6'4 234 pounds and throws the ball very well. Jimbo Fisher is excited about the future with E.J. Manuel of Florida State. Thompson back out to about the 12. Lost a couple of yards. Manuel's got some playing time this year with uh, the injuries. The cumulative effect of the injuries to, to Christian Ponder with his elbow and his shoulder and last year when, when Ponder went out after the ninth game Manuel got some valuable experience. There's no substitute for that and Jimbo Fisher thinks that EJ Manuel certainly will 
take over for Christian Ponder may be able to expand this offense to include a little bit more of a mobility standpoint but he can filter in. Manuel tries to do it himself and he's got a first down. And that's exactly what we're talking about the mobility and Manuel's like we said a big a big guy 6'4 234 pounds he's not easy to bring down and I tell you the the quarterbacks are getting bigger and faster every year I've been out of the league <laughs> it's like I don't recognize these quarterbacks it used to be when you go into a locker room you could identify the quarterback because he was one of the smaller guys now quarterbacks look like defensive ends it's confusing to me. Again, pounds his way out to about the 30 yard line for a gain of nine as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Turnovers, the biggest factor, certainly for Florida. Three fumbles, an interception, they turn it over on downs when they fail in a fake punt attempt. John Brantley, part of a three headed quarterback rotation, none particularly effective, but Christian Ponder on the other side, three touchdowns. And what a way to go out as a senior. What a way to go out as a senior class and what an exclamation point that you put on your regular season if you're Jimbo Fisher in your first year taking over for Bobby Bowden. That is impressive. Because you go back and you look at it, they could have they could have easily beaten North Carolina. They had a chance at the end of the game, they lose 37-35. They miss a 40-yard field goal at the end of that game. Could have very easily beaten NC State. They had a chance of a fullback wide open in the end zone to win that game. And, and Christian puts the ball out a little bit too far and fumbles the ball. They lose that game. They could very easily be 11 and 1 after the end of this game. And we're talking about them in the BCS hunt. Another first down for Florida State as E.J. Manuel in a quarterback draw moves the chains. And all that being said, I think maybe the maybe the biggest ramification of this win and the way that this win is coming about for Jimbo Fisher is the recruiting battle in the state of Florida. I was out on the field before the game. They had over 100 recruits on the field before the game. Each one of them watching this impressive win by Florida State. And make no bones about it, the, the recruiting war between Florida and Florida State in this state is fierce. Thompson up the middle. And Robert Flores is standing by. The news just keeps on getting better for Florida State. That's right, Bob. Danny O'Brien to Torrey Smith. That combination has worked three times for a touchdown for Maryland. And they extend their lead over NC State 31 to 17 early fourth quarter. If this score holds, Florida State advances to next week's ACC championship. Meantime, LSU down a point to Arkansas 21 20 early fourth quarter. Check it. They've just scored a touchdown, so it's now 27 20 PAT pin. Thanks very much. But you wonder if someone sneaks down to Jimbo Fisher at some point and says, you know, by the way, you got a two touchdown lead going on right now between the Terps this, and this, the Wolfpack. Do you think we might sneak that up on the screen while we're running out the clock? This place would erupt. Good job by Manuel to take the play clock all the way down. Lowers his shoulder and gets to about the 40 yard line, six yards shy of a first down. Well, if that score does indeed hold and Florida State does indeed make it to the ACC championship game, they'll be the team taking on Virginia Tech, 745 Eastern next Saturday night on ESPN. It would be either Virginia Tech or perhaps Florida State, unless NC State yeah. pulls off a miracle two touchdown comeback in the fourth quarter against Maryland Jimbo Fisher in his first year replacing Bobby Bowden about to put together the first nine win regular season for Florida State 
since 2003. That was the last year that they beat Florida. Could you imagine if he also took them to a BCS game? Now it'll be fourth down for the Knolls, so they'll kick it away with a little over two minutes to go. But I think Jimbo Fisher has done it in a way that's been very respectful of the past, very classy, but also looking to the future. And he has brought a lot of innovation and a lot of attention to detail. And the process with which they develop players is his focus. And that, to me, has been the biggest difference between Bobby Bowden and Jimbo Fisher. FSU takes the clock all the way down, and they call a timeout with 1.33 to go. I think right now Jimbo Fisher is being told what the score of that game is. The BCS Countdown <laughs> Show Sunday night is coming up as well. You can catch the latest BCS Countdown and the exclusive unveiling of the new BCS rankings. Find out who's in the driver's seat and who's poised to be this year's BCS Buster. Coverage of the BCS Countdown presented by Vizio on ESPN Sunday at 8.15 Eastern. I think that conversation just there was Jimbo Fisher being informed about what the score is between NC State and Maryland. And you wonder if he has to kind of give them the benediction to now go up to the scoreboard <laughs> shop here in the press box and say, OK, you know what? We got this one in hand, 31-7 with 133 to go. Do we let the crowd celebrate by Boosie should, NC State score up should, as well. He should just walk out to the 35-yard line and give a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> a shank punt out of bounds by Sean Powell. We'll give the football to Florida with 126 remaining, and it looks like we have a flag down as well. Flag down at back at the line of scrimmage. Foul, roughing the snapper, number 22, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, a little more salt in the wound, as if it's possible for the wound to get bigger for the Gators. They rough the kicker. It's a personal foul, and now Florida, can, uh, Florida State can simply take a knee. timeout and Florida State can celebrate when we return. Saturday Night Football continues on ABC. It's a battle in the Big 12. The winner of this game will be in the driver's seat for a spot in the Big 12 championship game. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Brent Musburger and Kirk Herbstreet will be there. Coming up at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Some of you will also see Notre Dame against USC. Both games part of the Dr. Pepper rivalry series. E.J. Manuel gives to Thompson. Up the middle. And unless Florida opts to use their timeouts, I can't imagine they would. At this point, Florida State can simply take a knee. I think you got to go back, Bob, to the second game of the season when they went out to Oklahoma and they lost. 47 to 17 and after that game Jimbo Fisher said I don't want to forget this feeling I want my players to remember it I want them to learn from it it's something that we can build on and be productive if we use it in the right way and this season has really turned on that game well there it is Florida State gets to celebrate For the first time since 2003, the largest margin of victory for Florida State since 1988. And for the first time ever as the head coach of the Florida Gators, Urban Meyer loses to the Seminoles. It was a three-year wait for Jimbo Fisher to take over for Bobby Bowden. 
now he has an opportunity to continue with the momentum that he's built in this program. Big win. Well, what a way to go out, at least at the end of the regular season for Christian Ponder. As Urban Meyer and the Gators leave, the fireworks go off. Not only do they love the score here at Doe Campbell, but they're going to love the score as they continue to hear it <laughs> develop between NC State and Maryland. They're midway through the fourth quarter now, and Maryland continues to hold on to the 14-point lead. Well, I think you put the uh, Maryland-NC State game up on the jumbo, John, and just keep the party going here at Doe Campbell. So once again, our final score, 31-7. Florida State wins the rivalry game over Florida. For Brian Greasy and our entire crew, I'm Bob Wischusen. We say so long from Doak Campbell Stadium here in Tallahassee. Stay tuned for the postgame report after this word from our stations.